This is Twit. Yeah, this was a really interesting story. And to be perfectly frank, as an Android developer, I had a bit of a gut reaction to this story. So, But I, I think it's a really <laughs> good topic for discussion and yeah. a good thing to kind of maybe talk a little bit more about how development teams and process and organization work. So the actual story is that Discord on August 1st, yesterday, uh, Monday, August 1st, announced that it is actually going to rehaul its Android app and switch to using React Native to implement its Android app. It's already been using React Native, which is a, basically a you know web and iOS, web and cross platform uh, platform for creating apps. It's been using React Native since 2015 for its iOS app, but it has been writing presumably Andro uh, native Android since then. But no longer, it is going to be switching over its Android app to also use React Native. And on the official announcement on Discord site, they basically mentioned two big you know advantages of doing this. The first is feature parity, and they explain that. What happens? What has has happened on Discord is that generally Android implementations of a feature would have to wait for the desktop and for iOS to finish being completed before those those feature would be rolled out on Android. So Android users probably felt a bit of a lag whenever a new uh, feature was announced, and also the users will also get a more unified experience so that the layout, the styling, and the experience will be much more consistent between iOS and Android. So. That is all well and that that I mean those are those are very fair points to make and yes I I I think my so I have many feelings on this and I actually talked to a couple of my friends who actually use React Native and native Android um kind of at their workplaces so my reaction to a lot of this is to the idea that switching to React Native is giving you feature parity so yes but my, I am a little bit grumpy about this because a lot of times when it comes to feature parity between iOS and Android or web and Android and iOS, in my experience, now to be fair, I have not worked with React Native, neither have I worked on any products have, that have any React Native, but generally speaking, when there's feature parity, the differences between two platforms, it's an organizational team structure issue and resourcing thing. It really doesn't have to do as much with technology. And while it is fair to say that, well, if you already have one app using React Native, switching the other will give you some code sharing. And that's kind of what, you know, the reasoning behind a lot of this is, is that the they will, the, the same team will be able to write a lot of the feature code using React Native and not have to write two different code bases and maintain different, different code bases and have a more consolidated, consistent, in a launch procedure. And that is all very well and true, but I do think it's worth noting that a lot of times feature parity comes down to design, management, resourcing, and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to put that out there because I have to admit I had a bad reaction. And when actually my, I, I told my husband about this headline, he was like, he also had his own like React Native rant and I talked to a couple other friends that, that actually do. Well with React Native. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I know, Ron, you had some, you had some thoughts. Yeah, too. well, I, I can't, I can't speak from the developer perspective, but I can speak from the product manager and, and CEO perspective, but uh, the Scorbit pinball app is built on React Native and mm -hmm. it's built on React Native purely so that we have feature parity across iOS and Android and we're not managing separate code bases mm -hmm. and we're, we're we're able to launch on both platforms which Jason you know and remember is a law is a is a many many year pet peeve of me of when uh, a startup or a cool app comes out like what what, what was the talk Clubhouse was that the 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 mm -hmm. the social talking that like available only on oh. iOS like come on do it on Android too or even yeah. when people right. do an Android was, version and no iOS yeah. version yeah exactly right. and so like one of the things Things I pushed for when we were when we were working on Scorbit was that we would launch on both platforms at the same time and maintain you know common feature set and the way to do that was React Native. So you know so and to your point now that said if you ask me what our biggest um, uh, not strong suit what's the opposite of strong suit our, our biggest drawback with our app is design right it's like you know like we we have basically which is a a prototype design that we frankensteined into working through the app because we focused our money and our resources into hardware and cloud services and not on front end design and so if we really wanted to add bells and whistles or uniqueness or stuff like that you know then understanding we would hit a limitation of what react native could do because you're doing it on both platforms but for right now from a business case react native was the best solution for us and I think that's totally valid. So I, I yeah. so just to be clear, I, I'm a native Android dev and my preference as a person is just for that. That's I like to do that. But React Native and Flutter are all valid solutions. And there are cases where it makes much more sense, like as you said, Ron, for you to yeah. get a good 
working app on both platforms at once with, you know, if you're not like a, you know, uh, a fang company with like teams of like dozens right. of developers, it makes a lot of sense and they're totally valid. And I've heard a lot of people have a lot of fun with both. And in fact, in terms of the technology, I talk about Jetpack and Post all the time, a lot of the principles are still React and Redux, all these things. We're, we're all just borrowing from each other. Um, I will say that kind of to what you were alluding to in terms of like platform specific things, I did ask a very good friend of mine who does work on an app that has both React Native and Android, you know, her thoughts on it. And basically said, you know, like, yeah, to be fair, React Native can really help you. And it, and it, and it can, in many cases, it can help both speed up, speed up feature release and speed up you know, feature parity and make it easier to have feature parity. She did kind of echo what I, my suspicions were is that, you know, it might depend on the company and the app that there might be organizational issues in terms of feature parity. But she also wanted to to be more specific in that there are, there's a lot of times for them as they're working with it, they have to branch the code where they're actually now working again in native code, either because they want to support a specific thing. And she gave the example of iOS force touch, which is, you know, very specifically just iOS mm -hmm. and, for example, say foldables on Android, iOS doesn't have foldables. So if you wanted to do a feature that was able to take advantage of, you know, very specific hardware or hardware features like that, or even specific platform features, you have to branch the code. So it's going to be some shared code, but still there's going to be some native expertise required. So it really depends. She says that she thinks it's totally fair. Like if you're writing a simple or straightforward app or just a an app that has a very consistent experience across two platforms, yeah. Go wild, break native makes a lot of work. But as your app gets increasingly complex or as you want to do more things that are platform specific, the you know, it's not like React Native is gonna be a magic bullet. There's a lot of factors and it depends. Waffle, 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 it depends. So I mean, I just think it's interesting to talk about the nuances and why it definitely I mean, from from for me, it makes sense for Discord to do this. So no hate there. But I do think it's a really interesting discussion on, you know, you I mean, maybe like when you're an Android faithful and you hear like these different things or these different companies trying different strategies, it's not black and white. There's a lot of different issues there. And, and there's a kind of reasons why the whole right once run everywhere hasn't been like the thing that all of us are doing. And it's very nuanced. Um, but, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. I just, I, I, it was just very interesting, the reaction that I had and like my husband had and like other yeah. people that I asked about this had. So, but, and you know, and, and like I, I, I loved hearing like your perspective, Ron, too, uh, kind of like, as someone kind of on the opposite side of someone like me, often at a meeting, like what your thoughts are too. So yeah, no, I, I mean, and that's the thing is that like I, I understand you go into it full, you know, kind of aware as possible of it. Like, like there are aspects of the, of each native platform, both Android and iOS, that you lose when using React Native. But again, like it goes goes back to the developing decision versus the business decision, right? And so mm -hmm, like, absolutely. you know, and, and we were talking, we were talking before the show and I mentioned it and, and chatting with some of the folks in the chat room, we actually like a little behind the curtain, but like, and like the real kind of developer startup-y kind of, uh, kind of experience, um, we got, our development got decimated earlier this year because we were using uh, developers and React Native developers in the Ukraine. And mm -hmm. war, the war started, and they dropped off Slack, and 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 haven't heard from three of them, three of the four. Um, you know, l luckily one of them got in touch and said he's safe in Moldova. But I know for a fact two of them were dropping their keyboards and going to get arms to go protect their country, and haven't heard back from them. Right, and so, mm -hmm. so, so now we're in a position where we've lost our development team. And we need to find new solutions to do that. And luckily, we've also lost several years of invested knowledge and know-how of our code base and things like that. But luckily, it's in React Native, so we don't need to go far to train someone up to what we've done because it's already in a language that makes sense, and therefore it's not forked, mm -hmm. and it's like all these other things. So, like when we mm -hmm. get back up to speed, it's going to hopefully be you know a little faster than it might be if we had separate unique code bases or done in a different thing. Like it's more of a commonality base, which as a small company works for us, right? But again, it's those it's those trade offs. So. Um, it, it, I, I do think it's interesting that Discord is going in this direction, though, to maintain that parity because they are a company that if you're watching them, they are going through lots of rapid growth and I don't want to yeah. say growing pains, but growing evolution, right? I mean, we use Discord mm -hmm. for the Twit Club members. I use Discord at iFanboy. We, you know, like I'm in like a bunch of Discords myself and all that sort of stuff. And it's been interesting to see them wrestle with their identity and what are they. And part of that is maturing as a company and figure out what you do with your products, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. 
That's yeah. like another interesting point too, is that, I mean, I mean, I, again, I'm, I'm always for what works for your business and your users. Number one, the, the technology is kind of just here or there. We all have our own preferences. I think that's interesting that one of the things they talked about was making the experience more consistent. And I, I think for me personally, uh, and I, <laughs> my husband and I had a little rant about this while like one of us was shining more like, like, I think we, especially kind of being old school Android as we always feel like we always like you know, experiences that are tailored to the platform. And I guess it kind of goes to the thing like the force touch, right? Like you have these features that features and these kind of paradigms and, and I guess, um, paradigms for working within a certain platform, you kind of want that consistent, you know, consistent between, you know, app to app. Like I, I want like, you know, a gesture, like, I don't know, back navigation or something to work the same way across all my Android apps, because that's, I live in Android every day. Whereas as a company, you want to make sure that your brand and your identity is consistent between all your different clients. So there's a little bit of tension there. I feel like between trying to be like, I guess I always phrase it as being a good platform citizen. It's a little highfalutin, but you know, trying to be like consistent in the world that your user lives in, in terms of mobile space, but then also making sure that as a product and as a company, you have a consistent experience across all your clients so that no one is maybe losing out or that, you know, the, that, right. that you have like whatever delight or functionality or services that you provide, you provide your users are consistent across every single place that they can get it. And that's important too. So I just think it's an interesting tension as well. Um, and so, I mean, I have my opinions and I know like just to throw it in there anecdotally, I know some people are worried because the Android client that they're getting now written in React Native feels a little bit slow. And that's kind of a common thing that I've heard. I don't have any real knowledge about this. That sometimes depending on, again, it depends on what your app is doing, what components you're using, it might be a little bit slower and performance might be a little shaky, but I mean, we'll just wait and see. I, I mean, to be honest, it makes sense. If iOS is React Native, then I, I'm i surprised that it took them oh, this long to get to Android uh, React Native as well. But I don't know. I, I don't have any other experience other than just speculating. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, Interesting stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah. That was that was fascinating. I'm like, I'm staying out of this. I love sorry. I love, I love the point <laughs> counterpoint. No, 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 no. I, I, <laughs> I think you guys one. covered both bases. And I just want to say, Ron, I hope your uh, your developers are okay. I do too. Yeah, hope so. We yeah. hope you know we, we we keep reaching out. We're trying to figure out how we can support them, but hopefully they're all right. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah.